Welcome to another episode of the Team Elmer's Update, where we take you past the orange barrels and onto the job site. We're heading back across the mighty Mac again, this time just south of Sault Ste. Marie near Dafter, Michigan, on Interstate 75. Team Elmer's was given the task to replace two large culverts, which were installed roughly 50 years ago and had reached the end of their service life. In order to accomplish this, the Michigan Department of Transportation had to close off a section of the interstate and redirect traffic before our Hillman-based Team Elmer's crew began the process. Well, the very first thing is, you know, we set up traffic control and uh, we had a big detour on I-75. And then when we got there, we do our pavement removals. And then um, we had to have our big crane or Manitowoc um, set basically 11 semi-loads of sheeting, um, get that all installed. Starting, we had to drive sheet piling to build a coffer dam to dewater the old culvert. And we dug it all down and ripped it out, disposed of the old culvert, and we had to Line the bottom with uh, two different layers of rock, and then install the culvert with 8,000 bolts and ungodly amount of pieces, and tar it, seal it. Had to wrap it with two different layers of textiles, and now we're onto the sand now, sand backfill, and hopefully concrete in a couple weeks. But what makes this project special? How are these culverts different from any other? Well, on I-75, usually I've, we don't see much of the metal culverts. Typically, it's a box culvert, uh, concrete in style. Um, but So these are kind of unique to the situation. And uh, they're a lot bigger than normal. I mean, this culvert, like I said, is 137 inches, so it's extremely large compared to normal. These are extremely different because uh, typically a culvert comes together assembled, or these are actually panels. And the panels are extremely large, so it takes quite a bit of manpower to get everything lined up and put together. So you actually put all the pieces together um, at one time. So it's it's uh, basically like a big jigsaw puzzle. Pieces to construct and lift and swing in the hole. It's definitely nothing you can do by hand so most all of the lifting was done by machine. Trying to get the pieces lined up was kind of difficult. We're getting the bolts all to line up, make everything fit. Now that we did one, the next one would be a lot easier. Actually, for such a small area of where we're, where we're working, it takes a lot of equipment. We've had uh, you know, large excavators to 345 size machines. We had our Manitowoc 70 ton crane, um, sheeting hammers, uh, dozers, loaders, and we're only working within a 200 foot spot. So it takes a lot of equipment and a lot of manpower um, to do such a, just a culvert. It's, it's different. The crews may have a lot of machinery on site to help with the heavy lifting, but that's not the only challenge they face for this project. Probably the biggest challenge that we found is once you get the culvert assembled, um, you have to do it loose and then you tighten it back together and there's approximately 8,000 bolts um, in that one culvert. And we found that with uh, not very much torque on them, what would happen is as you tighten them, the rattling of the impacts would actually loosen the other bolts you just tightened. So it was a challenge to figure out how we could take vibration out and get stronger guns and make sure everything stayed tight. Overall, we had a lot of help from the um, Culver company. They sent a representative up to help us put it together and that definitely made things a lot smoother. That representative is Bob Meinzer, a contact sales consultant from Pika, Kansas with five decades of experience under his belt. Well, the project uh, involves two drainage structures, uh, fairly decent sized pipe arches that we manufacture. And part of the contract required that we have a representative on site to observe installation and backfill. The only thing that's really different is the liner system. MDOT designed to shed water off of the structures, go over the structure, which is kind of unique and uh, I don't run into it very often. But that's not all that Bob found unique on this project. I've been in the business for 50 years and I've never worked with a crew that worked together as a team and worked harder than this crew. They work together and they work hard. And they work hard all the time. To receive such high praise is always appreciated and certainly a perk of the job. But the location of the project certainly has some perks of its own. Very peaceful. <laughs> all, we have, all we see is deer and birds. It's kind of strange not dealing with traffic, but... It was nice. That traffic is back on the road now. And in fact, the crew was able to open up the interstate much sooner than initially expected. MDOT's original completion date was October 15th, and we're looking at a total completion by August 1st. Um, 
right now they're doing the second culvert both together and uh, everything's coming along very well. The public really appreciates it and so does MDOT. They want to get I-75 back open as soon as they can. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Team Elmer's Update. As always, we thank you for your patience and stay safe out there. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. And check out TeamElmers.com for more project information.